also a little disclaimer here. I'm not like an expert pink scout. I'm not trying to claim to be or anything. But I did want to share with you the technique I like to use. Uh, several like little finesses and techniques you might be interested in trying. Uh, the whole idea is that it should eliminate the need for the uh, wrist kilt. You can just kind of do the pink scout directly in front of the audience without them feeling anything. Um, and this doesn't require a bending of the deck. So it doesn't really require any pinky strength or thumb strength or anything. It's really the geometry of the deck uh, and positions of the fingers that are causing um, the count to happen. Right? So it should just be like this very light amount of movement that you'd have to be staring right at to see it. And I know people can do it without any any cards popping up at all. Like you can see when I do it, it's like a tiny, there's a tiny little something there. But it is possible to do it with like virtually no movement there. But so I'll kind of explain how I do it. And I don't want to get too advanced here, just, you know, I like to ramble on, so um, I'll just show you the drip position. So the important thing here is that you're holding the deck from essentially two points of contact. So think of it like, almost like you're doing a bottom deal type of grip. So you're going to start from an elevated grip, so you base all the left, bottom left of the pack in the middle of the thumb. And the middle finger is going to be about two-thirds of the way up on the side here. And that's going to be putting pressure against the middle of the thumb. So you're holding the deck in an elevated grip between the medium of the thumb and the middle finger. These are the most important fingers. The other ones are kind of there just for stability and to help uh, shape the bevel you're going to make. So the shape of the bevel is the, kind of like the geometry I'm talking about. And you can, I don't know if you call this a, I don't, I don't want to use the incorrect terminologies, but you know, you can bevel, I call this a twisted bevel. So you're, what you're doing is you're, you're beveling the back edge here, but at, in turn you're also beveling the front edge here. So the top left is beveled, the bottom right is beveled. I call it like a twisted bevel. And that's what I like to use, because now I have something to put my thumb, uh, some surface area here for my thumb to push forwards into. It's not bending down like this, it's pushing forwards like, almost like this. So it's pushing away from that. Not so much, it's not really pushing down though. And the reason I like this is because it, since the, the deck is beveled, if I push into the bevel, it actually does create a, a slight downward pressure, but it doesn't get seen in the muscle, in, in the muscle movements. You know, it doesn't look like that's what's happening. So anyway, so that's the important thing is, uh, I'll just show you the finger position. The thumb is going to go right there. We're, we're basically in elevated mechanical strips, holding the deck mostly between the thumb and the middle finger here. The other things are going to help shape the bevel. Index finger, I like it at the front here. Just rest uh, just slightly over the top of the card so nothing pops up. And that's going to push backwards towards the back of the deck. And that's basically it. So these are the main fingers doing everything. Ring finger, I like to lock it against the middle finger too. And now the pinky is allowed to pretty much move independently of the other fingers. And that's kind of the key here. So I just think that really helps facilitate the action of the pinky. It's Having these fingers locked in, I call it anchoring. You anchor them into position, and then when you're ready to start doing the count is when you start pushing forward with the thumb. And all you're going to do is just lightly kind of just graze the edge of the deck here, and that's what's going to facilitate the counting action. So you can add more or less pressure as you practice, but it, it should be this really light pop-up thing like this. You shouldn't really see the parts popping up. Once you're in this position, you can use your ring finger to engage that lip and reverse bevel slightly. If you want uh, to do the count, or to do the turnover rather, Let's see if I can explain that better. But this is essentially it. You're holding the deck like this. Okay, when you're ready, the pinky will come back here. But the shallower of a grip, the better, because the pinky I think is easier to count if it's on the actual corner. But you can do it from the edge too, or here, or you can do it from here. Um, I've seen people do it really nicely when it's actually on the corner, because you can really feel each card. Like it's more tactile. Like I could really feel two clicks there uh, pretty easily. And then all it is is a matter of bringing that, engaging that ring finger into that gap to actually fire the double. And then I just like doing a burning style similar to push off. So once my ring finger's in there, I bring my thumb here. I can create that little shelf, which allows me to come in and you know, tripod grip it, or I can do whatever I want from here, soft double, whatever style you want. So that's pretty much it for how I do it. Now, a couple of finer details. Um, you could also, so the bevel is really important. 
bevel. So you want to have this bevel. And the more extreme of a bevel you have, the easier it is to feel uh, or to um, drag your finger across. Okay? But that looks kind of ugly, right? Uh, so instead, you don't really have to bevel that much as the more you practice. And what I do, what I've been trying to do lately, is starting from this bevel. And you'll notice that if I reverse bevel in this direction, it causes my pinky finger to roll open, and you basically get an automatic pinky toe. Like, if you do it correctly, like, I've been working on this, I'm not pretty good at it yet, but you see what I mean? Like, it, there's no bending or pressure here, it's just the geometry of the deck and the finger positions when you're uh, changing the shape of that double, right? So you're using the fingers on the deck to kind of shape this double, kind of move the deck around like this and play around with your doubles and stuff and see what kind of doubles you can do. Um, but that's kind of the bread and butter of how this works, is utilizing the double and uh, to create a nice consistent kind of spacing between the cards. So you don't want a linear bevel, right? And it can be more of a parabolic shape. However, if you have clumpy cards, it's common for like two to get uh, flush with each other. And then, you know, so a newer deck is going to work much better for this technique. This deck is pretty jacked up. But it's still a work for demonstration, right? So, but you do want to have a pretty clean, evenly spaced double here on the edge, at least when you start. And then if you want to try this technique, of um, kind of reverse beveling with this, so it's extremely slight. You don't really notice it. It's like that. It, it literally automatically counts uh, cards for you. If you have your picking in a certain position, it starts to automatically count the cards. I think this is four. Yeah. So, but anyway, uh, that's just a little bit more advanced. You don't have to worry about that. You can just bevel the deck, get it in a bevel you like. So I, sorry, I keep showing it like this, but you should have your pinky resting, obviously, when you're doing this for it. Um, and you should be able to get into a bevel position in one action. So, like, you spread the deck, you square it, and it's, in, it's already in that pinch where you need it to. And again, you, you don't need a perfect bevel in the morning practice. You'll get a feel for it, but maybe uh, pay attention to it closely if you want to try this particular method there. But that's essentially it. So it's just the pinky's able to move independently after you lock this ring finger to this middle finger. Or you can put it down here or whatever. I just kind of have it resting here. And then it's just a matter of just lightly raising the pinky down on the edge. As you push forward to the thumb, like this. And that will create just enough pressure to uh, start creating the, uh, a cup. I don't know the technical terminology for this, but we're kind of just creating like a little, a little lip here, I guess, right? And uh, hopefully, if you do it well, if I do it well, you can kind of do it like just in a small gesture action like this, and you can do your pinky count in that small gesture action, rather than wrist killing or, or looking really strained or bending that and seeing parts pop up like this, which is not really good, right? So, I kind of like it this way. I don't mind like a slight wrist kill when I'm talking, but honestly, it looks better if you just kind of have more of an open pose like this, and you can like, just do a light, kind of light gesture as you do it, and then you can get that pinky count done in that small gesture, and it'll cover any of that minute movement of the fingers. Uh, but that's just how I do it. So, try it out if you want, and see how it works.